today I'd ask you to turn to Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. Begin to read at verse 38 and continuing uh, to read right to the end of verse 4 in chapter 11. Uh, in these verses we meet two women, uh, Mary and Martha. Uh, and we come face to face today with the origins of what's probably the best known prayer in Christendom, what we call the Lord's Prayer. For you and for me, uh, at the very center of our relationship with God, there's our devotion to God and then the dedication of our lives to the service of God. These lie at the very center of what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. My Bible commentary puts it like this. It's not about a serious religion or frenzied service or busyness or incessant good works nor achievement but rather commitment not activities but attitudes. In our reading today Jesus is invited to the home of Mary and Martha. Our following of Jesus involves us inviting Jesus into our home to be part of our family living, uh, to be part of our, our home life, to be our companion with us in our homes. Mary sits at the feet of Jesus. She listens to his teaching. Martha, on the other hand, is busy serving. And, and practical service uh, really does have its place. It's important. But whether working or resting, whether serving or listening, we need to be where Jesus is. We need to culture uh, that uh, awareness of his presence, and we need to become increasingly those who live in his presence. For us, like these two women and like uh, Luke knew well himself, we're called to follow Jesus all the way. We're called to follow Jesus all the way, even to the cross. Abandoning our wills to his will. Abandoning our lives so that we live our lives for his glory. Abandoning our plans to the purposes and plans of God. So on his way to the cross, Jesus teaches his disciples to pray. Let's be men and women who are dedicated Let's be all out or all in, whichever way you want to put it, to God. Let's give him our everything. Let's give God our, our best. Let's come to know him and be committed to coming to know him more and more, to love him more, to live in his presence more and more and more, to learn to talk to him and to listen to him, to culture in our lives a life of prayer. And so as we conclude this morning, I, I just want to read uh, for us these words of the Lord's Prayer as they're given to us by Luke. And then I'm going to pray the Lord's Prayer, but actually using Matthew's version, which is the fuller version, as a prayer. Luke gives us these words of how to pray. Father, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. And so let's pour out our hearts to the Lord in prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And I pray 
that right now, Holy Spirit, you'd come down. You'd come down upon each of us. You'd come down upon us. You'd come and rest upon us. You'd fill our lives afresh. You'd impart to your church a, a spirit of intercession that you'd teach us how to pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Kindle in us a, a love for Jesus. Kindle in us a desire to be in his presence. Kindle in us a longing to hear his voice. Kindle in us that hunger to spend time sharing and pouring out our hearts to him. Lord, teach us to pray, just as you taught your disciples to pray. Teach us how to pray. Equip your church to become a praying church in these days. For Christ's sake. Amen.